Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? We are on episode 96. I don't know why I paused. Yeah, I know. I was like, so wait. Was like, my brain's not totally working. I was I looking at my phone. I'm like, did she cut off? Is she hung up? What I, happened? I don't know. I don't know. I'm tired. Hi, guys. We're on episode 96. That means we're almost to 100. That means we are. You always just let us know right where we're at. And I really appreciate that. I mean, some people might not be great at counting. I can count. So <laughs> I do uh, have a uh, problem to flag, though. Oh, God. What? We have fallen behind on subscribers. And I don't think we're going to hit 100 by the the end of the year <sighs> i knew this was gonna happen i did too it, i mean it was like it was more than a thousand a week that we would have had to get yeah well you know what if we accept our failure now we won't be so disappointed when it doesn't happen and the thing is is i really just want the plaque we're gonna get the plaque though because we will eventually get to a hundred thousand subscribers it's just gonna take a little longer and then also there's only one plaque. Who's going to get it? We'll talk about that later. Didn't I tell you? No, I looked up. The, you can order another one. They cost $150, which feels like a little steep. But I mean. Yeah, I guess we could split it. <laughs> I guess the little one I bought us was 50. So yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. We should both have one. I mean, honestly, full disclosure, I have every single YouTube plaque that I have in a closet. Why? Because where the fuck am I going to put it? <laughs> Display your accomplishments. I mean, I'm not going to put it in my living room. That's so awkward. But like, I don't know. It just found its way into my closet. The Clever Style one is hanging in my living room. Oh, Because I do perfect. have the Clever no, Style no, that's Million perfect one. for you. I just thought for me, it wouldn't work. It, I, I, it looks good. I'm Yeah, no, love that. Okay. <laughs> um, I always think it's funny. I'll look over it and be like, hmm. I love that I just like took it. We hit a million and I was like, okay. Um, well, I'm taking this because I have edited and been in most of these videos. So, <laughs> and no one fought it. They were like, yeah, I mean, you can take it. Wait, but the one that you have for Clever Style, since it's an older one, it has the play button in the glass, right? As a or is it just a gold like plaque thing? Oh, like do a, they not have, is it not like a sep, what do they look like now? Let me get it. This is what they look like now for a oh, million. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, mine is in a frame and it's a gold play button that's like in it and then. That's how my 100,000 one is for my main channel. That's how they used to be, but they decided to do this. And I'm like, there's not even a button. Like the whole thing was that it's a play oh. button in glass. So is the 100,000 one just that, but smaller and it's silver? Yeah. Damn it. I know, it's like, really, are we gonna pay $150 for that? I don't know. Maybe Maybe we could just live at your house. Yes. I mean, we are, but... Oh, or I'll, I'll just take it. That's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. She didn't hesitate. Got it. Anyway, I don't know what the fuck that rant was, but... Better than the egg tangent. Oh my God, I know. Why did we leave that in? Nobody knows. You guys, I'm sorry that we went on like literally a five minute tangent about eggs. I was watching it back and I'm like... Why did we keep talking? Honestly, I saw a few comments about the eggs that people appreciated it. Like they were chiming in with their own egg commentary. Well, I mean, not to go on another egg tangent. Oh, no. But um, <laughs> one of the first episodes I did with Jocelyn was uh, like foods on your face. We did like different face masks that it was like different foods that are supposed to be good for your skin. And one of them involved eggs. And the entire episode, I was saying like how I hate, I do not like eggs. I don't eat eggs. Literally, I must say it at least five times. And then Jocelyn just can completely serious no sarcasm at all she goes what's your favorite kind of omelet <laughs> and it's like while i have eggs like dripping off my face and i'm like about to throw up and i'm like i don't like <laughs> eggs what's your favorite kind of omelet i don't like eggs oh you don't <laughs> That actually makes me think of this show because I feel like something people don't get to see very often, or I guess you can see it, but not quite how we experience it, is like how many jokes the other person misses because of our delay and we're on the phone. And it isn't until I'm in editing that like either Lily will say something or I'll say something and the other person's just kind of like <laughs> blankly staring, like not hearing anything. And maybe she just kind of tuned out, you know? Like that happens too. I wish I remembered some of them because there's been a few of yours that it was like, I was crying, laughing by myself watching it afterwards. And I was like mad at myself for not hearing it because I'm like, that would have bet like we would have gone on in 20 minutes. Oh my God, probably. yeah. But it's kind of fun to watch back. One that comes to mind is when we were talking about the combat gel lady and I was talking about the side chick of the husband. And then you're like, does the side chick have a name? And I said her name, I think it was like Marissa or something. And I was like, yeah, Marissa. And she goes, okay, so side chick. And I was like, oh, that was kind of a funny joke. Like she was acting like she doesn't have a name, but she literally just didn't hear me. So yeah. Yeah, I, things like that happen all the time. I don't know how the fuck we even got on that. Okay, guys, we're going to start this episode. I swear, here it goes. We're starting right now. Today's episode, we have three, I think, three topics, question mark. I'm unsure. It's going to be a little bit of a mishmash, all right? We have some like random tidbits to share that we didn't have time for last week. So we're just going to do it right now. So what do you want to start with? I feel like now the new tradition is for you to choose what we start with. Halle Bailey.
Bailey, nail salon drama. Is it hard for you to say Halle Bailey because uh, you want to say Halle Berry? I thought Halle Bailey was Halle Berry forever. <laughs> like, before I knew that she was her own person, I was like, man, Halle Berry's like back on the scene. She's like, like Benjamin Buttoned. Honestly, I feel bad for her because I can't imagine that isn't a problem for more people than just us. Because ever since I first sure. heard her name, I was like, oh shit, I can't say that. It's like my brain <laughs> can't compute. Yeah. So we have that drama with the nail salon. We have Lauren the, the Mortician. Mortician because there's an update there that is confusing and I'm just confused. And then we have one more that could be a miscellaneous thing or we could talk so long about those first two that we don't have a third topic. We don't know. TBD. <laughs> um, let's go with <laughs> younger Halle Berry first. Okay, let's do it. So Halle Bailey, if you guys don't know, that is the actress that played The Little Mermaid recently in the live action. Have you seen it? Actually, I have not. I couldn't tell you the last movie I watched in general, much less the last movie I like went to. Oh my God, you remember when you used to make me go to iPick all the time? Yeah, I do. And make is a strong word. It was so fun. The only reason I didn't see The Little Mermaid is for two reasons. Did That sentence didn't make sense. The only okay. reason is for two reasons. The only two reasons. The only two reasons are as follows. Number one, I never don't. Do not come for me, girlies. I mean, honestly, I never liked The Little Mermaid. As a kid. The music is so good though. I liked the music, but I just didn't like the movie. It was so boring. Like it was the type of movie, it was a lot like Lion King. I don't like Lion King either. I don't like any of those like original, like Cinderella. You know which Cinderella I love? I think I've said this on the show before. The Brandy, Brandy one? That one was epic. That one changed my life. Brandy and Whitney, are you kidding me? Epic. Well, and of course, a Cinderella story with <laughs> well, Hillary and I don't think that's Chapman in the Murray, same but... kind of category, but sure. I never really liked those original Disney movies because as a kid, I found them very boring. I liked the music again, and I liked kind of like the idea of them. Like I liked the idea of being a princess, but when I would sit down to watch something like Little Mermaid, I'm like, what's ha like I'm over it oh I mean I definitely wasn't like I want to be a princess I was like <laughs> dressing up like as a lion and <laughs> oh period love that for you honestly that's one of the main reasons I didn't want to watch it is because I didn't really like it as a kid so how am I gonna like it as an adult sorry okay I mean I know there's like stands out there for all of the original Disney movies but I just didn't like them number two is I caught a glimpse of live action Sebastian and it haunted me in my dreams and I was like absolutely not I'm not going to watch a movie with that freaky crab. I think I saw that. Oh, it's like a real crab. Well, that's what I'm saying. But then it's also like a fake looking real crab that just looks like a little monster. It's just scary. Yeah, it kind of reminds me. <laughs> Did you watch All Real Monsters ever? Yes. It reminds me of Oblina. I don't remember names. The striped one. Oh. <laughs> she had those eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is not the point. Sorry again for that tangent. Jesus, today's episode is going to be something, isn't it? But... Halle Bailey is obviously huge because of not only The Little Mermaid, but her singing career with her sister. They are like protégés of Beyonce and they're very well known in the music industry and they're very talented. This is not at all the point of what we're gonna talk about, but something that is interesting is that right after the movie came out, Halle Bailey posted multiple TikToks with really, really explicit songs about, I think like a dripping coochie that someone wanted to lick or something. I mean, I'm talking, it was explicit. and. All all of the comments were like, damn, that Disney check cleared, huh? Disney is usually so strict about that shit. And I always found that like very interesting. I'm like, damn, you literally just got off the premiere for Little Mermaid and then you're doing that, which honestly, I don't give a fuck, right? But I'm just saying like, I found it interesting that she was allowed to do that because I thought Disney really like cracks down on that. I feel like it's different though with um, the Disney kids that were in like TV shows. So like Hannah Montana, like she's on a contract for like, seasons if you're just in a movie and it's a one-off thing the reason i actually believe that they're like very very strict behind the scenes is because i know someone that launched makeup with them and just being associated in that regard they literally didn't allow them to send pr to anyone like there was like a 200 person list and like 50 people made it because they were like, no, not this person. Nope, they did this, they did that. They believe this, they believe that. We're not even giving them PR. And then that person who launched the makeup had to be like very, very clean on their socials for months before and months after it even launched. So I'm like, why would Halle Bailey not, you know what I mean? It was a dripping coochie, Lily, a dripping coochie. I mean, I was like, damn girl. I mean, honestly, I don't know if it was a dripping coochie, but it was something like I was gonna so... say, what song was it? Like It was something about flipping and licking and 
did, you know, rub it all over. I'd just be curious what the contract looks like then. I know, it's like, like, be like nice. an itemized <laughs> list of things you can't do. <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about? Nails? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Literally been filming for 20 minutes. <laughs> So Halle Bailey is very popular because of the Little Mermaid. That's the whole point that I was trying to make. And I don't know if I quite got to it, but now we're here. So I recently saw this uh, story. I don't know if it's a story or a Snapchat that she posted. It was a series of videos. And she was talking about a negative experience she had with a nail salon. Chloe just got back in town and she always has her nails done really nice all the time and never really needs them done, but she needed her toes done. So I told her about this place i'm like well come with me today to the place i've been telling you about the russian manicure place like it's good it's good so we were excited to go i set the appointment for 3 10 right i called the lady back and i made sure i'm like i'm gonna get there early my sister has something right before so she might be a few minutes late is that okay and she told me of course that's okay you know, 15, 20 minutes late is okay. Mind you, I'm thinking the appointment is at 3.10. So I get there early, like at three, they start taking off my gel X, everything's going well, I'm getting excited. My sister's coming, I'm like, ooh, I can't wait for her to relax. And everything, have a good time too. So I get there and immediately, like the lady starts saying, uh, where's your sister you need to check her in da, 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 da. and i'm like oh she's on her way i told you like she was gonna be a few minutes late she's on her way though how long how long because she has we have back to backs back to backs mind you no one is in this place it's empty there's like one girl getting her nails done and no one else is in there but me i'm like okay she said she's like nine minutes away and then she like starts giving me faces like nine minutes isn't gonna work so i'm slowly but surely starting to get a little bit irritated because i'm like wait a minute like i have been a consistent customer here for the past few weeks i, I brought like them so many people my glam team goes there now to get their nails done like i have really brought them a lot of customers and i just can't believe that they're acting this way over nine minutes so i start getting frustrated right and the aries in me i'm trying not to turn up like that and i'm just like you know what hallie just breathe just breathe chloe will be here soon it's gonna be okay she keeps going keeps going at me talking about well then she finally goes i'm sorry but we're gonna have to cancel her she can't get hers done today while i'm in the chair already i'm and then i start saying excuse me ma'am um literally like i have been here i told you that she was gonna be late on the phone already before i got before we set the appointment and now you're telling me when my sister is five minutes away now that she's canceled while she's on her way i'm like that's not right like and i've been a consistent customer i've always been on time everything else like you can't just you can't just take the benefit of the doubt and be like, you know what? This girl has been good. Like, we can wait a few minutes. But you're going to have an attitude with me and try to... So, I'm starting to get upset. And then me and the lady start going back and forth. Because after all, I've been, I've been a loyal customer and everything. And you're mad about nine minutes. And she keeps going at me. And so, I don't know if you guys know, but if you go to these, like... It's like a Russian, it's a Russian manicure place. So their English is good, but they're like kind of really, um, how do I explain it? They're really direct. So sometimes some of the things that they say like comes off like it's being rude just cause their tone of voice. But other times I would just, you know, not really take it that seriously. But this girl, she was like, literally, she walked over to my chair and is arguing with me about this. So at this point, I'm really upset and we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then Chloe walks in and she's like, I'm so sorry, but you're going to have to be canceled. And I say, you know what? In the middle of my toes being taken off, I'm like, you know what? Okay, we will just take our business elsewhere. And I get up, my feet still wet, my hands still all powdery. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, no worries. Because I'm not going to let you tell me 
that my sister can't get her nails done, but I'm going to sit here and get my nails done? No. Like, no. So I got up and we both got up out of there. And I said, you know what? God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I didn't get attitude -y as Aries as I could have. Chloe said I was still really nice. But I just told her that is unacceptable and rude because I've been a loyal customer. So that really disappointed me. I got so upset, I started crying. Chloe was laughing at me and was like, Allie, it's okay, it's okay. But I got really upset because that's not how you treat people. Especially people who bring you customers and are consistent with going there. So I'm never going there again. So was she okay. a loyal customer? I, I was about to say, I don't want to put any burden on you, but if you want to throw a loyal customer counter in there, nobody's stopping you. Um, So I saw that and honestly, I was like, no offense, but like... <sighs> What yeah, are we I, doing here? Like, what? Do we, come on, girl. Here's the thing is, and I don't think we've ever talked about this um, on the podcast before, but um, oh. that being an influencer gives you a certain amount of leverage when working with like companies. For oh, hundred percent. Uh, yeah. So, like, I can think of a time that I um, booked an Airbnb. And then there was like a glitch with the system and it took all of my money, but it did not book the Airbnb. And then when I called, they were like, oh, your money will go back in your account in like seven to 10 business days. And I was like, that's cool. Coachella's in two days. And they were like, well, it'll be there in seven to 10. And I was like, now I don't have the money I need to book somewhere to stay for this weekend because you guys messed up. And they were like, sorry, whoops. And they just didn't do anything. And then I tweeted and guess who then gave me a gift card, booked me a place and it was very accommodating. Here's the thing I get though, I get, and there's more to this, by the way, this is not it. But to get into that discussion really quick, I see two sides of it. I see as a regular consumer who is not an influencer, that's super fucking frustrating. And I think that that's why it's like having people like Keith Lee is so cool. Who's like, no, you're gonna treat me how you treat everyone else because it is easy to accept that special treatment because it's like the thing in the first place was unfair. Like you shouldn't have been treated like that. But then it's like, fuck, like why can't they resolve this for everyone else if they're able to? You know what I mean? Totally, totally. And I'm absolutely not saying it's fair. You also can lie and say you wouldn't probably take it if you could, like you wouldn't be like, thanks for resolving my shit. And it's not like I'm like able to like totally like shut down Airbnb, but my whole point was gonna be, it isn't fair. First of all, that's side comment, but you shouldn't have to be an influencer to have say with a company and it is gross that it, it does take like being verified or something to get them to listen but the reason i bring it up was actually just because that i feel like is something with like airbnb not a small nail salon what's the point of this what is she trying to do get them shut down well this goes a little bit deeper because she has a boyfriend whose name completely escapes me uh let me look that up real quick okay so Holly bailey has a boyfriend named daryl Dwayne granberry jr and they've been together for about a year and a half and when this happened did he mind his business no of course not why would he he tweeted and he said do you want to read that lily this place is racist towards black people they kicked my girlfriend out while doing her nails please give them a one star they don't deserve business and he links to the fucking nail places i guess yes. yelp or the google yelp review page, yes. or something yeah a few things a few <laughs> questions did he post this after she did that story that i don't know because since i didn't catch it live i don't know which came first or last because the video doesn't have any like timestamps on it because these are conflicting storylines i know <laughs> i was about to say this is literally not the story she just told like at all yeah she said that she chose to leave and that she was like angry so she like walked out with and that it was a very wet. calm calm collected situation she said god bless and then she walked out she blessed them and went on her way like that does not sound the same as getting kicked out because you're black, which is a very, very, very charged thing to say and then link to the business. Like that's just a very intense statement. It also feels a little ironic because one of the things that I thought was a bit interesting about her video is her pointing out that they were Russian and commenting on like how they're like rude and stuff. If this was something she felt, I feel like at the very least it would have been a mention in the very long series of, like that was a long video we watched. She could have easily been like, I felt uncomfortable. I felt profiled. If she's a loyal customer, as she says, then I'm unsure why this would be the first time they're exhibiting some kind of racist behavior to someone that isn't there. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And again, she never mentioned that. Like that was not 
something that she thought. She goes out of her way to describe why they were rude is because they were Russian and that they're like, it's kind of like a cultural difference or something. Not that they were racist. Something I really didn't like about her video was that she was like, it was empty. It was this, it was that. First of all, if they are appointment based only and not walk-ins, like it could look empty to you and they could still be back to back. Like that's not how that works. If every single tech is with one person and then the next person shows up and fills that person's spot, like that's still back to back. It doesn't need to be like flooded for it to be busy. I think that a lot of people in the nail, hair, makeup, you know, that kind of service industry world are constantly undermined when it comes to their time. And I'm not saying that it doesn't go the other way as well. I think that there's some stylists that fuck up there a lot and aren't mindful and honest with other people's time. But I think the majority of the time, it's like people think it's 15 minutes, like it's not a fucking big deal. It is a really big deal if you have appointments back to back and then you're making them late and then it's just a whole fucking snowball effect the whole day. So it does get a little bit more problematic when the nail tech herself who had this encounter with Hallie had to kind of address this because it got so out of hand after her boyfriend directed everyone to leave the one star reviews. Well, and also we didn't even talk about that. Like that's just fucked. Like even if they did do some like I mean, not, I guess if they were racist, then sure, leave them one star reviews. But like, what if there was one person that did something like they gave bad customer service and then you're gonna like penalize the entire business for it? It's one thing to ask as an influencer, like if you're wanting maybe attention from a brand and you're asking your fans like, hey, tweet this brand like to notice or I don't know what the fuck which even that I don't like I don't like that unless you do it to Chili's but this is literally just like pointed hate like it's just like hey go and falsely you know leave reviews on this per like I feel like there should be some repercussions you shouldn't be able to leave reviews unless you have been there I know no for real um but anyway this is what the nail tech had to say about it my name is Leila and I'm owner of the perfect nail salon we had a call and client she made appointment today at 3 p.m for her and her sister. Later, she called me back and she said, like, unfortunately, they can't be on time and she wanted to reschedule 30 minutes late, which I said, I'm sorry, we are fully booked today and we can't take you. There is nothing dramatic, there is nothing bad. Like, we wasn't rude, they just refused the service to client who was late 35 minutes. Every second I get one star reviews and I get so bad reviews where people say, like, burn on hell, we are racist, we are very bad. We kicked out someone like like they banded my all my business pages. Now I'm now I'm really scared just to go back to work tomorrow in the morning because I'm pregnant. And you don't know what's gonna happen. You know what if I'm gonna go to my work and random people? You because you never know. She's a popular person and how many thousands of people now texting me, calling me. What I'm gonna do? I'm just really scared. Like just because you celebrity and you have million followers. You posting about, about, it's okay if you post about the situation, but you posted our pages where it's all information about our business, about location, about our phone. And this is not, not just business phone, it's my personal phone. So basically the, the boyfriend docks them, essentially. That's what I wanted to talk about with all of this. Like this kind of is giving, but it's not necessarily Hallie's fault. Again, it's her boyfriend's fault. Um, it's giving Tana Mojo and the wine lady. You know, when she not only said this story about the wine lady, but then said where she works and what her name is. Like, I think that as an influencer, if you say a business's name in a negative connotation, along with their name who works there, I feel like that's a form of fucking doxing. That's why I brought up the Airbnb thing earlier, because I think that even if you didn't say their name, even just saying a small business's business name, and like like she said, like people could show up. Like even if you had millions of followers and you tweeted something to Airbnb, what's gonna, like, they're gonna be fine. I mean, I don't think you should be tweeting like horrible negative things and definitely need to be careful when you're saying that places are racist and like people are gonna take that really seriously and then try and like retaliate. But I think there's more of an issue. I like, I think you need to use your discretion as an influencer, obviously, of how you're talking to businesses publicly and how your fans are gonna react to that too. When I have tweeted Airbnb in the past, there's not people then following up being like, fuck Airbnb. Like, no, I was just getting their attention because I was verified. It wasn't like me asking my fans to do it on my behalf. First of all, I think this woman's fear is completely justified. Like I can't imagine the reaming that she got. And she said her fucking 
business pages got banned, that alone, like probably flagged for a bunch of fake reviews. And she seemed like terrified. Yeah, genuinely. she genuinely did seem terrified. And I mean, I don't blame her at all. You know, I understand as an influencer or whatever, someone with a lot of followers online, I understand when you feel like there's like any sort of injustice or like, I don't even think, again, that's what Hallie was saying at first, but like, I can think of a time where I recorded someone at their job. It was one time for a fucking story time. It wasn't for the story time. It was a story time and then I had footage kind of thing. And it was a security guard that was so aggressive with us in Blue Martini in Miami. It's a big like a uh, bar chain in Miami, whatever. But it was a security guard that literally was so like, you know, those people that go from zero to 100 so quick. And he was so aggressive and like almost fought my dad who was like older. I was literally like, what the fuck is your problem? Okay, so really quick update. Sorry to pop in here and interrupt myself. But upon mentioning this, I did go back to the actual story type itself. It's not public anymore. Whenever I come across old story times, I just private them because ew. I'm not a huge fan of my old story times, but that's neither here nor there. I wanted to kind of refresh my memory on the circumstances surrounding this. And when I did, I realized that I not only did not show this man's face, this footage right here, that I'm showing is the actual footage that was in my video. His face is completely blacked out, but I also did not mention his name. I did, however, mention the establishment. Like I said, Blue Martini, I guess I'm mentioning it again now. But that being said, his face was covered and I didn't mention his name. And I thought that was worth noting because I feel like those particular details are important, especially when we're talking about being an influencer and the influence that that holds and how you have to be careful with how you deliver information about people who are not influencers. So yeah, just thought that was relevant. But anyway, moving on. Do I think I would do that now? No, I don't even think I would do that now. But it is hard in the moment when you feel like the place doesn't care because I had emailed them. They don't care. You know what I mean? Like they don't give a shit about anything. There's not going to be any repercussions for this person. They're just going to continue to do this to other people. It is so hard to not be like, well, I could just show people who this person is or this business is like I get the need for justice, right? Like you just feel like, fuck, like with the Airbnb thing, you're like, I'm out money and they're just keeping it. Like that's fucked up. Literally, it was gonna be like, you just ruined my weekend and now I can't go because you messed up and now you're just not gonna and do anything. And if you had that like, outlet, what? a lot of people would utilize it. I think now, just because I'm older and like I'm so past my like story time and like the initial drama phase, like if I have an issue with a business, I'm just gonna resolve it like an adult or not resolve it. I don't fucking know. Like it's just like, I'm just gonna live my life and not really get too into it online with people. Meanwhile, we get into it with people every week. The only time I've ever done it is like not to make a scene about it. It's because they are literally un like you can't contact someone or you try and they don't care. Yeah, it's very frustrating. That, exactly, yeah. Also, there's obviously like a spectrum to it where it's like Tana Mojo doing it to the wine lady who was just doing her job. The wine lady didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, like, at all. She just didn't like her and they butted heads and then like threatened to like kill her. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and literally. And then it turned into like all of her fans like sending death threats right. and like trying to get her fired and stuff. So that obviously like there's no reason that you should do that ever. You're not even trying to get anything out of it. It's literally just out of spite. Yours, I would say, I agree. I don't, th I feel like you wouldn't do that no. now. But I do understand where you would be coming from when it's like, he's threatening your safety. I understand filming something and then being like, look at what this person did because they're gonna do it to someone else too, potentially. Yeah. In Miami, my husband has been confronted by police twice, like in a very, like the cops were abusing the situation twice, like threatening to kill him. Like it was really, really bad. And I was present Jesus. for both of them. And the first one I was present for, I was pregnant with my son. Literally just bullshit. And I so badly, I wanted to have his badge number. I wanted to sit down. I wanted to fucking ream him and be like this officer, this badge number, this per And I didn't, it was tough. Like I was like that person, funny story, not funny at all, went on to actually threaten my dad. Like a couple years later, he was still a cop, still in Coral Gables, went up to my dad. My dad was in his like work uniform and a van. Literally the guy just went from zero to hundred and like threatened to like fight my dad until my dad got his phone out to like protect himself. And then the guy just walked away. But like literally a lunatic who should not be a cop. And I wanted so badly to like call that out. And I get it, I get the urge. And I didn't even do it then. I was just like, you know what, fuck it. I think that all in all, if you have any sort of influence, you do need to kind of sit with it and be like, okay, even if I am seeking justice, right? Like again, I said, I wouldn't do the security guard thing twice. Like I wouldn't do it now. Ultimately, the only thing that I kind of got out of the video is like, well, 
Now he's ashamed. Like there's really nothing, I didn't get resolved by the place or the venue. If the place already isn't gonna take action and the action you're seeking is just other people to shit on them and like ruin their life or scare them, then I think that's where you need to be 100%. able to have discretion and be like, there's no reason I'm doing this other than because I'm yes, angry. Yes, angry, that's what it is. You feel that anger, that like rage of like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And you just wanna do something about it. And when you are an influencer, you have the power to do that instantly and that is like a really really dangerous thing and can be and I mean in this case even Hallie who was just like okay let me just say this story this was frustrating but then I moved on but then she has her fucking boyfriend which I'm sorry I don't believe that she wasn't a part of him tweeting that like you know what I mean yeah that's I guess where it gets confusing here because they are like very conflicting stories and we I think talked about with Tana's situation like had she just told the story not a problem whatever that's fine just don't name anyone and don't name the business Hallie didn't name the business and she said it was a Russian nail salon but I don't think that I don't think people would have found it I don't think they would have gone to the trouble to try and find it and she also her story wasn't that bad the fact that he linked to it it's like what are you what are you doing but I do think it kind of backfired because I think 99% of people are on this nail tech side and the businesses side and they're like listen little mermaid or not whatever you're late and obviously there's conflicting stories of how late and nobody has proof for it nail tech says 35 minutes she says she was like 10 minutes late or her sister was 10 minutes late so who knows but like the first thing I thought when I was hearing her speak was like well how the fuck do I know like I don't know if what you're saying is true or not so what are we even talking about here like why are we talking about it. I think the conversation goes to even beyond, like obviously this was uh, someone with a lot of followers in an influencer situation and that's why they got overwhelmed. Think of all of like the Karens that get filmed. It's like, who is this? And then like people are posting their jobs and stuff, which honestly, I think most of the time their job should know if they're a racist piece of shit. But it's interesting because I feel like we're at a time where you don't need to be an influencer to get a lot of attention. Right, that's and true. luckily, I think that plays out in people's favor sometimes with like even the wine lady with Tana and with this lady that they can post a video and it could go just as viral as the original one even though they don't have any followers. Yeah, it's like a fence lady, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now everyone does have a platform of some kind for it to like gain traction. At least now there's a chance for people that get a celebrity or an influencer that are gonna shit on them publicly and try and like ruin their business that they do have at least a fighting chance to share their side and have it get traction to the point that people are on their side. And I feel like that wasn't a thing probably even like five yeah. years ago. The videos that go viral, you don't have to have a following no, at all. No, you don't. But they shouldn't have to do that. You need to think it through like, what is your goal and who is this affecting and what's motivating it? Yeah, I totally get, again, defending yourself. I get coming from a place of anger, but I do hope that Hallie and her boyfriend learn from this because it's just not the way Way to go about this. You know, when she first started talking about it, I had the feeling of like, okay, like, you know, I understand that sucks. But anyway, like, why are we talking about this? I do understand defending yourself. I understand the anger. Again, I've acted out of anger many times. But there's a difference between venting and doxing. Hi guys, Lily here with an update, of course. Uh, I did some deep diving last night because I was a little confused on the timeline we were looking at here. And if I'm being honest, I'm still a little confused. I'm pretty sure that Hallie posted her story before her boyfriend posted any tweets because otherwise that's just even more confusing. So we're just gonna go with that narrative, but I don't know exactly what time. I just know that Hallie most likely posted that story on the night of the 21st. Also on the 21st is when I'm pretty sure her boyfriend tweeted out the racist accusations about the nail salon and told everyone to go comment in one star. I can't tell you specifically when that happened because when I tell you, I have searched way longer than I should ever admit to find any screenshot of that tweet that had the fucking date stamp in it, which like I get the neighborhood talk in the shade room aren't exactly like reputable news sources necessarily. But like if you're gonna screenshot a tweet, why the fuck wouldn't you include the date? Anyway, sorry. While he did delete that tweet, afterwards, he tweeted quite a bit more and he didn't delete any of those. The next one, chronologically, is him saying, good job with a clapping emoji, thank you. Which is likely in response to the fact that the nail salon's Yelp page that he had tweeted out and told everyone to leave the one star review on. Yeah, by 927, apparently the business was listed as temporarily closed, which 
I think we can all guess, is because they were being bombarded with bad reviews. Clearly, his followers did what he wanted them to. And then, of course, he continued to tweet that night. The next one was, ask me if I give a fuck. I don't think anyone had to because, you know, it's pretty clear he didn't. He then followed that with, it's bigger than black and white. It's a problem with the whole way of life, with a fist up emoji. Then he followed it up, ironically, with, being nice to people is free. It costs to be mean. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he really lives by that mantra, it seems like. As well as this next one, where he says, let's spread more love and positivity around the world with a heart. Is that what you were doing earlier when you posted the Yelp page? Because and I don't think people were so uh, loving and positive, but you know, I digress. So the first post I can find of Hallie's story that we watched is actually on 1122, which I'm guessing that the outlets just saw her boyfriend's tweet first. I think it's a little weird they wouldn't have gone and checked her social media as well, but I don't know. I did get a little uh, computer nerdy here and I looked up how to check when something on Instagram was posted. If you do like right click inspect and click on the date, it tells you. So it says that this post was made on 11:22 at around 6 p.m. And not only does it include Hallie's Instagram story, but it also includes the video from the nail salon owner that we watched. And also the caption references her boyfriend's tweet. The caption was edited, so I'm not sure what it originally said, but considering her boyfriend's tweet was the day before, I wouldn't be surprised if it still included that. The only reason I would question that is because none other than Halle Bailey herself actually commented on this post by The Shade Room. You know, the one I just said that also includes the video from the nail salon owner basically crying and clarifying the whole situation because it was after her boyfriend's tweet, which sent all the people to the Yelp page. The reason that's important is because her comments says, y'all, it is not that serious. I was just explaining my day on Snapchat and did not name any names. Heart and glitter emoji, dot, dot. We went to another salon and still got our nails done beautifully, LOL, crying laughing emoji. Everyone be nice to everyone and calm down about some nails, please. Hallie. Uh, girly pop, did you miss uh, the whole your boyfriend tweeted out basically doxing this nail salon and could very well be responsible for ruining this woman's business? And you have mentioned nothing about the racism that he did and clearly you are aware of it because it is in this post that you are literally commenting on? I'm confused. I don't know. It just like... <laughs> If it were me, I probably wouldn't do like laughing and crying emojis and telling everyone to calm down when you just were inadvertently responsible for ruining someone's livelihood. I know, that's just me though. Then of course her boyfriend um, decided that he had to tweet more about the situation, but of course indirectly and with a little bit of a passive aggressive touch, he went on Twitter and began posting how he was gonna be picking five people to gift $150 to so they could go get a manicure because that's the obvious next step that he should have taken in this situation. He did also uh, retweet a post that was captioned, me right now, cause DDG ain't do shit, but ride for his lady, stand on business. So he was riding for his lady, but his lady has never mentioned the racism. So that might be because maybe she didn't experience the racism that he's referring to, or no, yeah, that that's still it. Um, either either way. But uh, while we're on the topic of her boyfriend not shutting up, let's go back in time a little bit. The initial posting of his tweet, the screenshot that's terrible, is on the Instagram account, The Neighborhood Talk. The Neighborhood Talk then posts again on 1121, and it is a screenshot of someone's comment from their previous post, and it's someone saying, y'all irkin, cause why you kicked my Aries queen out for? And the reply to that comment is from none other than the nail salon. And they say, not true, she was late 35 minutes, we just didn't take her. The caption to this post from The Neighborhood Talk is, the nail salon says why Hallie didn't get service with a thinking emoji. The pinned comment on this is from none other than her boyfriend, who has commented simply, cap, the emoji. But right below that, we can see that the nail salon has commented yet again and says, please check my stories. We have proof that we were fully booked and we couldn't accept a client who was late 35 minutes. All clients for us, same. We respect all our clients. When Hallie started her service and it was already 20 minutes since her appointment started, we already informed her that we can't take her sister. At the end, her sister was late 35 minutes. We apologized and just said that we can't provide service. In 25 minutes, we have next client. This is our business. We work with clients. We can't refuse service. We get paid for that. We work so hard to get more clients, not to lose them. 
So then their next post is actually showing past reviews from that same nail salon that were way before any of this had happened. So it wasn't from the people her boyfriend sent there. That did prompt me to, of course, go to the Yelp page and I read them myself. And while there were definitely a few, like probably four or five that were not stellar, <laughs> there was only one that I saw that mentioned anything about them being potentially racist. And I mean, it's hard to say without having been there, but from what I was reading, it could have been a misunderstanding and there could have been a bit of a language barrier because the reason the person was thinking that was because the nail salon owner said, people like you just want free service. And the people like you, obviously, she took as being because she was black. But if you look at the review, apparently there was a bit of back and forth over like text message. The nail salon owner gave her a discount, but then she didn't remove the bad review she had left. And then uh, it was quite a bit of back and forth. But from what I can gather, that was the only example of potential racism. And again, I was there, so I don't know. Regardless, what is interesting though is that the rest of the bad reviews, for the most part, did seem to line up pretty well with how Hallie portrayed the entire situation, which was that they're a little too direct and they come off as maybe being rude. And they did all seem to mention like appointment times and like wait times, and it was a kind of a similar situation. So, from everything I've read, it seems like Hallie could have been definitely telling the truth. If she was, I don't think it was particularly necessary to go on social media and tell everyone, but she didn't mention anyone's name. It was her boyfriend that did that. And I don't think Hallie was unaware of what was going on, maybe of the first tweet, but like she she saw what was going on afterwards. So you would think that maybe she would have come out and said something publicly after she saw that her boyfriend had sent like a angry mob to go shut down this business. But instead it was just that comment that I read earlier, crying laughing emoji. And it's not like he posted one thing, he was like gloating about it afterwards. So the fact that her reaction was to leave like a dismissive comment acting like it's no big deal when it clearly is a very big deal to someone involved is disappointing. But anyway, I think that's it. Back to past us for the next topic. Well, that's the thing is that I understand her boyfriend might have been like super defensive or like angry for her or whatever, but you linked it. Not only did you link it, because that's even one thing. You said, go leave zero star reviews. <laughs> like that's, uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Well, and like I said, what if it was an experience with like one employee, but now you're gonna destroy fuck up the, the entire business. business? Yeah, like it's just so unnecessary. Yeah. Um. But just do want to throw out there. Um. Don't send them hate. But if you did want to tweet uh chilies and tell them to bring back the original chicken crispers, I think that would be an acceptable uh use of my influence to be asking you to do that. So um, just throwing it out there. I feel like that's an abuse of your power. Well. Anyway, the next topic and probably our last topic because we went on for way too long about nails is going to be Lauren the Mortician. So if you guys do not remember, we had an episode on Lauren the Mortician. The entire topic was basically how she inserts herself as some sort of child safety expert when that is absolutely not a part of her credentials. She has nothing to prove that she has any more of a say than anyone else, yet she shits all over people who actually do have those credentials. Anyway, if you want to watch it, we'll link it down below because it's a really long segment and we dive into everything there. But that's not what we're talking about today. There is a recent development, and I'm not gonna lie, I am very confused about this, and I will explain why. So there are two creators, one who is anonymous, but has reached out through a commentary like TikToker to tell their story, and one who I'm not familiar with by the name of Kitty. Do you know Kitty? <laughs> that's it. Uh, her name is Caffeinated Kitty on TikTok. Okay, well, Caffeinated Kitty has 676.3 thousand followers and identifies as a villain life coach. I'm not sure what a villain life If you know what that is, please is. leave it in the comments below. So she posted this TikTok and it was sent to us quite a few times. A sizable content creator on this app has apparently hired an attorney to threaten me with all manner of legal actions. And I need to come on here and set the record straight because it's not only a problem online, but it has crossed over into my real life. Because seriously, this attorney sent the police to my front door in a wellness check but I take that to be a very clear threat of doxing. But the thing is, is that I am a villain life coach, so that's certainly the first problem for them, that I'm going to be true to myself and my brand by giving them a very similar energy back in response to this ridiculous situation that they've created. Let me preface this by saying that the content and the things I am about to show and tell are all for the purposes of critique, commentary, parody, satire, and a recitation of the facts, and any names utilized in my little addressing of the situation are only names that have been part of their public profile that they promote. 
as of this video, of course. So when this first started to the attorney, I didn't think that it was actually someone Lauren hired. I thought that's such a bad PR move. And so when I got the sudden copyright infringement strikes on my other two platforms, specifically regarding a video that featured clips of Lauren and clips of me in a comparative format to explain and address why anybody would ever confuse us, which is the only reason I ever made a piece on Lauren, because people were like, how could anybody get you too confused? You look nothing alike. And I'm like, thank Baphomet on that one. But this is the context. And it was created by someone else who gave me permission to repost it. So when it got copyrighted, I was like, hmm, that's definitely not from the person who made it. And then I looked at the name of the attorney associated with the copyright strike, and I recognized it from just very earlier before, where someone had reached out to me asking if I had gotten anything similar to something they got after they sent an email to Lauren for just a singular private email, as far as they told me. And they got an absolutely unhinged response from someone claiming to be her attorney. And this was the same person. So like I said, I thought Jeanette had just gone rogue and not been actually hired. So I reached out to her to clarify and ask, like, I have it on good authority that you are representing Lauren with this specific video. Uh, so I got to ask, like, are you her actual counsel, like hired? Because if you're not and I make a video on this, this is going to look bad for you and Lauren. Like, it just will. And I just want to be sure because clarity is important to me. And for the audience's perspective, it's very important to me that you guys know that I am way too competitive to be wrong so easily. And it is such a bizarre copyright infringement strike because- What platform is this on? Is this on TikTok? This is on TikTok, yeah. Can you do copyright strikes on TikTok? So she's not referring to TikTok. She says my other platforms only. And I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. I, I don't know if she's talking about YouTube or Instagram. I'm like, Instagram, I don't think that's a thing. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. That's the first thing my mind jumped to when she said copyright, but she does say multiple platforms that she was copyright strike. Like, it makes no sense. Well, <laughs> let's just say you guys that I may have done some deep dives last night as you already saw by the update in the last one. Jesse hasn't seen most of this. I haven't seen any of it. Well, I mean, I kind of gave you like a, a brief overview, but um, mm -hmm. we were so confused the last time. And I think for like 25 minutes, we were just like saying we don't get it. To actually sit down and film an update, it takes a series of things, but mainly it takes us literally not being able to use what we filmed. Because it's so wrong. This time it was extra weird though, because we basically were sitting for like, 30 minutes, so confused. Like we end it confused, we start it confused, in the middle we're confused. We're just sitting there being like, huh, what? And there was like no resolution to it. So Lily did her deep diving and found things that kind of connected some puzzle pieces for us for it to make a little bit more sense. Yeah, frankly, I'm I'm still confused. Yeah, same, same. It doesn't mean we're not confused anymore because I don't think we're gonna get quite there, no. but we're gonna get to a point where at least we know what the fuck is happening and like we could be confused about what's happening, but we know what is happening. Kind of. Oh God, we have to refilm again. I know, <laughs> seriously. This. The episode just never goes up. So where we left off with you guys, was we watched Kitty's TikTok and basically what we were getting at was how could this be real? Like this does not seem legitimate at all. And it wasn't so much a question of Kitty or like that she's a liar. It was just like, this makes no sense. Maybe somebody's like fucking with her. That's where my head was at. Yeah, but then also we don't have a very good handle on like TikTok and Facebook in terms of copyright. Yeah, that was another thing. We had no idea. Kitty didn't show any proof in that video. So we hadn't really dug around to see any more proof. And in the caption, like she commented on one of her videos and said that she had the first page of the cease and desist uh, link somewhere. I couldn't find it. And then eventually I did last night. So we'll look at that in a minute. Reg People figured out who the lawyer is that supposedly has issued these Season well, her name was everywhere. So that's something we did realize later on looking into multiple people's TikToks. So this has happened to multiple creators. What Kitty's talking about here, which is that she was copyright struck by Lauren's lawyer. That happened to another creator. And we actually ended up reacting to Becca Day, who is a commentary creator on TikTok, who we've reacted to before, I think with the dentist, the yes, creepy dentist, yes. Dr. Kenny. So we can show you guys our reaction right now. But before we do, I do want to say, I don't know what our faces look like in this video when we're reacting, but we were even more confused because we basically didn't understand how any of this was real. So we were kind of confused why Becca was even covering it because she was very much co-signing that it was legit. And now I kind of understand why. So here's that video. Okay, friends, I have a Lauren the Mortician update for you guys. And this one really pissed me off. And I don't really ever get angry. I get irritated. I get flustered. But I very rarely get pissed off. And this... 
this update is gonna piss you off <laughs> creator has reached out to me i am keeping them completely anonymous for their own privacy but they do really want me to share what was sent to them by lauren's attorney just to kind of see what type of time lauren's attorney and lauren are actually on i cannot show you guys screenshots of this cease and desist because it is communications between a lawyer and someone else who is not me um but i do have it directly in front of me i have received and i have seen my fair share of absolutely ridiculous cease and desist but this is easily the worst cease and desist I've ever seen, not only because of how unprofessionally it was written, also because of the very obvious and ridiculous amount of scare tactics and intimidation tactics that were used in this cease and desist. This creator sent Lauren an email a few weeks ago after all of this was coming out about her and she emailed her public email and asked if the rumors going on were actually true. This was a follower of Lauren, someone who really liked her content. She wanted to go straight to the source and figure out what was really going on. I've read through this creator's initial email and there was absolutely nothing that was threatening that could be seen as defamation, nothing at all. There was no form, there was nothing problematic in it. It was just very clearly a fan who liked Lauren asking for clarification if the rumors were true. It was not written aggressively. There was no threats of any kind. It was just seemed like a very genuine email. In response to that email sent to Lauren's public email, she received this cease and desist. And in this cease and desist, not only did it list this creator, but it also listed this creator's mother. But the email that Lauren's attorney sent this to was not actually this creator's mother. So now some random third party has a ton of private information about this creator. And before we continue, I wanna clarify, this creator never made a video about Lauren. She never made a video about Lauren, ever. The only correspondence was her sending this email, the singular email to Lauren's public email. That's not a thing, I'm so confused. Okay, so first of all, we were kind of also confused, I think, I mean, I know, when we filmed the last time um, about why the lawyer would be like approaching Kitty in particular and this other creator. The other creator, it's for them like writing an email. But Kitty, I guess she like just used screenshots and stuff. It was very vague, but I think that one of the things that we were confused about too is that we hadn't gotten copywritten because we're like, we have been critical of her and we didn't find Kitty's content of comparing them both and saying we're not the same person to even be like at all offensive or like worthy of being copywritten. But that was because we hadn't seen Kitty's video of the comparing, right, right, she right. just referenced it. In the video where she talks about uh, them and the comparison, before she talks about the comparison, she very much <laughs> exposes Lauren for honestly some of the same stuff that we did, but uh, mostly she calls out her being a turf and that she like follows a bunch of right wing people. And so here's part of the TikTok. Lauren the Mortician is a turf. I have receipts, I have deets, and you should just go ahead and take a seat. People notice that she was on her Instagram following a bunch of red adjacent folk, but in particular one that basically is a gay man's Tucker Carlson. And not only was she following him, but she was actively liking incredibly transphobic and hateful rhetoric and content. As you can see here, I decided to make a fun and helpful little list of all of the different videos I caught her liking. The bottom half of the list includes It's Giving Red Pill Era Girly, where she was liking other things that sounded very conspiracy theory and very America first and very I voted for Trump. But she just said she was bisexual herself and of course she supports LGBTQ and women's rights. Yes, very interesting wording in that little acknowledgement of the rumors video. One, not acknowledging the actual question being asked, which was what she found so likable about incredibly transphobic content, but two, trying to divert the attention by saying she is just pro-LGBTQ and bisexual as if that is some kind of hall pass that prevents her from being prejudiced to other subgenres of the rainbow. And then we're going to get to the second part now, which is where she explains the comparison. And this, I think, is the reason why, if this is all legit, which it kind of seems like it is, and legit is a conditional term there, actually. Apparently, Kitty is a creator that also has her fans use the whole Beetlejuice thing. If you guys remember from our last video for the child safety stuff, Lauren the Mortician, like people will comment Beetlejuice on any kind of child safety thing for her to then come give her opinion. And I guess people do that with Kitty as well, not for child safety stuff, but for villain life coach stuff, huh? 
apparently. <laughs> so I think that that makes a little more sense why she would have targeted her specifically. But here's the explanation that Kitty gives. Clearly you're a hateful person who just is mad that she's popular and has a bigger following than you and you just want to tear another woman down, you might say. But you're incorrect. The truth of the matter is, the only reason I'm saying anything about it is because I'm getting confused for her. In multiple different threads over the weekend that people were talking about creators that are coming out with controversy or bad vibes, I'm getting tagged because people are talking about the Beetlejuice lady and other people are being like, who are you talking about kitty and to those who are like correcting this i do appreciate you not because i'm afraid of getting hate i just prefer accuracy if people are going to dislike me can you at least dislike me for something i actually say or do and i don't even have the middle school mindset of she's copying me i'm sure she will claim that she didn't even know who i was and had nothing to do with me etc it was just a matter of coinky dance and that's fine my concern was that a people would claim i was copying her just because they heard it from her first as a larger creator in statistics or two she would inevitably do something that gets herself in some hot water and people remember like gimmicks better than they remembered names and so the beetlejuice thing would be brought up and people would get as confused and lo and behold like most things i'm right just not lauren's kind of right if you know what i mean and on that note and this is conjecture but i mean if it were the case that it was copying it wouldn't be the first time i forgot she also uh calls lauren out for potentially copying the whole morbid minute title thing i'm a morbid minute is absolutely from caitlin dowdy or ask a mortician and as somebody in the like funeral space it's a very niche content creation subgenre she has no reason to not know that i've never seen her acknowledge caitlin in terms of the morbid minute coming from her but I mean, I'll just point that out. So yeah, that's basically her explanation why she's gotten involved at all uh, talking about Lauren the Mortician. But to my knowledge, this is the video that Lauren's lawyer has reached out about. See, this is why we were confused because we're like, huh? <laughs> that's so stupid. We're like, that's so random. What do you mean? You're just comparing it? Like, you were making a comparison? Why would that matter? Well, she accuses her, I guess you could say, of being a few things, but like... Again, we also pointed out her kind of like extreme right-wing support of accounts that are really problematic and anti-trans and a bunch of really problematic content that she's liked. We pointed that out too. So it's like, what about us? Why don't we have a note from your lawyer? Because we don't have the Beetlejuice tie, I guess. And also maybe because we're cross platforms, so we're on YouTube. So maybe oh, that, true, I don't know. true. Yeah, because the lawyer seems to be uh, much more TikTok. She <laughs> likes TikTok only. And she actually um, talks about Reddit as well. Uh oh, Reddit girlies, watch Get out! Ready. She's coming for you. Okay, so now let's move on to good old. I I guess we can say her name right of course she's on tiktok yeah let's move on to jeanette braun can we call her janet sure we can i like i i mean i should say i don't like the name janet many of you know why yeah well janet here uh works at uh her own law firm which is braun ip law intellectual property so she specializes with like copyright infringement and trademark infringement and specializes is a generous term you know i'm not a lawyer <laughs> as a disclaimer, uh, for legal purposes. But I honestly feel like I know more about fair use after reading a bunch of things last night than this woman does. And she's supposedly a lawyer. Literally some of the things I've watched, I'm like, that's, no, that's not right. Here's some um, TikToks of her talking about copyright infringement on TikTok specifically. I received a good question in a comment, but the comment was deleted, so I can't respond directly to it that had said basically, wait a minute. If TikTok's terms of service give every user the right to use other users' content and modify it and post it, how could there possibly be a copyright issue on TikTok? The answer is there in the terms of service. It's just a little further down than where most people stop reading. TikTok lawyer, details so what reading. authorized uses are and what they are not in the your access to and use of our services above. So we have to scroll back up to the top of the terms of service to look at that section. And that section is specifically excludes certain types of uses. One of the uses being if you're using the content, someone else's content for a commercial purpose, 
Courts have ruled that if you are trying to grow a platform, trying to gain followers, trying to gain views and clout in engagement, that is a commercial purpose. The lawyer just used the term clout. I want to throw that out there. To your knowledge, is, is clout a legal term? Do you use that in court? We are in 2023, about to be 2024. I can't imagine that clout will not be used in law. But as far as I know, not currently. One of the screen recordings she's showing right now, TikTok doesn't use the word clout. So that was a personal choice. But um, I also can't help but like notice all of her stuff is so condescending. It's like, well, most people don't read this and people seem to think they think like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, did anyone even leave you this comment or are you just being... <laughs> Jesse requesting her songs to sing. <laughs> um, but the rest of this, listen up. Keeping in mind, like, what she's doing is trying to sue Kitty for, I mean, not even, but, like, threatening to sue Kitty for basically using, like, screenshots of stuff. Also, using content to impersonate someone else or to harass someone else, defamation, this kind of thing, discrimination, those are not authorized uses of someone Convenient. else. Convenient. So I'm going to guess, which Whoa. I mean, I know already, that she's going to claim that you can't use it for harassment, which one video is not harassment, and um, two, defamation. But here is a follow-up to that. By the way, <laughs> this video is a response to a comment. Guess whose comment it is? <laughs> Her own. No, stop. Literally me. But at least you would have made another account. Like, Of course. I would have never put my own account. What do you think? High School Jessie was an idiot? So she responds to her own comment asking, what if content is taken from TikTok and posted on TikTok? Do I have any rights? Convenient question. Let's hear what Janet has to say. Post on TikTok, you own the copyright too. You give TikTok itself a non-exclusive perpetual license to your content. If you have imposter accounts on TikTok or other creator accounts that are taking your copyright material, meaning any content that you make, and posting it as their own without giving you credit or a stitch or duet, or they're using it for a commercial purpose, you can take that down. One of the ways my firm battles imposter accounts is by using copyright rights because more often than not, the imposter accounts are infringing your copyright rights and we can have those removed. TikTok currently has a three strike rule, three copyright strikes and your account will be banned. That changed. It used to be that they would take it down with just one copyright strike. I think that's it. So she she neglects to mention though, fair use. I do agree with her that if you're reposting something, claiming it as your own and you do not change it at all, then yeah, that's infringing on someone's copyrighted like content. But fair use, like if someone is standing in front of something and has your content behind them and is talking about it, or like we're doing right now, reacting to her content, there ain't shit she could do about it. Well, I mean, or she could try, but more than likely she would lose. But I think one of the things here that we should focus on is that a lot of people aren't going to be willing to fight it because they don't want to pay the lawyer fees. <laughs> Side note, Kitty has a GoFundMe for her legal fees because she is going to fight it. <laughs> I don't even know. There's nothing to fight because I think it was just a cease and desist so far, which is just like a warning, basically. Yeah, but she did get the wellness check done, which I'm assuming she could probably seek like some sort of something. I was gonna say, I think she's just going to go after the lawyer because I don't think this is all legit. I think there's definitely like, if this really is Lauren's lawyer, whoever's lawyer it is, if this is really her, which it very much seems like it is based on all of her TikToks and she is in some of them so you can see her, definitely feels like there's some uh, legal lines being crossed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the wellness visit being the most bizarre out of all of them. I think she's unhinged in general. I mean, sending a cease and desist to someone who sends an email being like, hey, I have a question. Like, that's actually unhinged. I mean, but then again, even the cease and desist that she did send that random person, she cc'd their mom, quote unquote, but it's not their mom. And it's like, girl, who is this lady and why is she so crazy? And I guess I know we're all over the place. Sorry, but <laughs> there's a lot to get through. Um, Kitty did post the first page of the cease and desist and she said she is eventually going to share the whole thing. Uh, keeping in mind that she, the lawyer, did a wellness check, it's interesting if you read this because it says, I hope this email finds you well and in a centered and rational state of mind. Oh my God. I am Lauren the Mortician's federal civil attorney and I am in receipt of your email below. The proper preferred way to address me in communications is Ms. Braun. You and I are not a first name basis. 
on a first name basis? <laughs> Attorney Braun would also suffice. You proclaim to be a demon playing a game of chess against me while I'm playing checkers. I'm not playing any games. None of this is a game. And it is clear that you have no respect for the judicial process. <laughs> What judicial process? The one she made up in her head? And is this the cease and desist? Because this is not even how a cease and desist looks. Yeah, look at the top of it. It says notice to cease and desist. Like literally that's the only part that looks like a cease and desist. The rest is just nonsense. Like her, her it babbling. Just looks like a, it's just like an email. Yeah, this is so weird. Um, It continues. However, you are not playing a game of chess. Your actions make it undeniable that you are playing a game of twister in the mud. How what <laughs> the fuck? How many games are we playing? You could play Twister in the Mud. That's not even a problem, is it? It'd just be kind of messy, I think. But <laughs> anyway, I recommend you stop playing all games and get the situation. <laughs> stop playing chess and Twister. And no checkers, checkers either. I re recommend you stop playing all games and give the situation that you have caused the respect it deserves. You also claim that you will, in so many words, do demon things in the very near future. You intended this to be a threat to others based on the connotation and context of the statement. What is happening? So from this, I'm gathering that they had, it's probably fair to say, a few exchanges back and forth with each other before this. This is not like Kitty posted the video, copyright was done, this email was sent. Like Kitty posted the video, copyright was done, there was some back and forth we're missing here, and then this was sent. So from what she's saying, an email was sent by Kitty to the lawyer before, so there was probably some correspondence there let alone some TikToks that Kitty probably did like referencing the whole thing. She probably emailed her after the fucking wellness check. Probably, yeah. And she understandably was not happy. So I understand that. But it's easy to look at this and be like, okay, a cease and desist was sent. This was probably the response to that one TikTok of her comparing. I don't think that was the order. Like it does not make this any less unhinged. But the reason why she's taking everything so personally is because they've had some sort of back and forth. Yeah, we're definitely missing a few pieces of the chest If you game, think we're you still missing pieces you have no idea what the last filming looked like we had no fucking idea what was going on then there's one more paragraph that we have for now and hopefully we'll get more soon and update you in a future video <laughs> after seeing your multiple irrational and erratic posts on social media over the weekend along with your tiktok live stream oh, oh, you see i'm telling you there was a lot of stuff yeah. <laughs> i am worried that your mental state is unstable and that you may hurt yourself or someone oh else God. after reading this email Email. Of all the videos we've seen of Kitty, she seems very cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> It's very narcissistic talk. Like, it's very just like, I'm worried what you're gonna do after it. Like, bitch, you don't know me. Go away. Like, what the fuck? This is just so like condescending. I hate it. Oh, get ready, get ready. Cause it continues. I believe you are not going to take the news well that you were wrong. <laughs> And my proof is that you're playing Twister See in the mud. Report, bitch. Like literally, what do you mean I was wrong? You have no proof that she was wrong. You're just saying a bunch of words. Then get ready. This is the <laughs> the mic drop she ends this paragraph with. If you have not composed yourself yet and are still spiraling, please stop reading here and make sure that you have someone from your support network <laughs> that you trust to be <laughs> to be with you while you read on. Heed this trigger warning. What the <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god, this? I'd send this lady to hell so fast. This is so outrageous. I don't even under like if I got this email, I would go live and start laughing. I think. Honestly, yeah, because there's nothing you could do to this level of delusion than just you gotta laugh. I would love to be able to read the other cease and desist that was sent to the person who just emailed with a query. Is a query the word that I'm looking for? Yeah, sure. Because with all the things that Becca said, they were gonna be charged with, the $250,000 fine, the two years in prison. I mean, you're going to hell too, girl. For someone who claims that uh, Kitty doesn't respect the judicial process, like you can't charge she someone. She is the or, judge, like <laughs> jury, and the public. She is the almighty decider of everything. You know what I think happened? So when we last filmed, I had a theory. And my theory was that someone was like posing as Lauren the Mortician's lawyer. Like this wasn't actually a lawyer. I thought maybe this was someone that like got a law firm, a local law firm to Lauren, picked out a lawyer and decided I'm gonna impersonate them to fuck with Lauren. Like just a hater that was being weird. No, no, I don't think that's what happened. I think that this lady, because especially her TikTok presence is what makes me think this, saw everything Lauren the Mortician was going through 
through, you know, all the online controversy, reached out to her, was like, let's collab. I do not believe that Lauren is actually paying her. Although I know a lawyer can't like actually say like, you're my client. If they're not paying you, you have to pay like at least like a dollar. But I think that they have an agreement where Lauren is not paying her. She's like, hey, let me basically show you what I could do for you. That's a good theory. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> You're smart. You should go to law school. <laughs> because how many times have networks approached you and been like, hey, we can help you with your copyrighted stuff that people are taking. Let us just like uh, show you what we could do. Like I've had networks come to me and be like, hey, your stuff is being used here, here and here. We can help you make that stop. I was going to say, honestly, I haven't really gotten approached for that, but people aren't stealing my content. Oh, I Yours have. makes more sense because from Vine. So it would be one thing if people were getting more and more Titian's content and making a bunch of compilations but that's not what's happening <laughs> no no and i think that the lawyer both took some liberties like i don't know that lauren the mortician understands everything that crazy lady has been doing behind the scenes and all the threats that she's been sending but i do think that lauren the mortician definitely agreed to her this is just my opinion agreed to her like representing her and like trying to get people to not harass her quote unquote online although i do not believe what any of these people did was harassment or at all worthy of the threats that they've gotten it's just absolutely out of control but i think she signed off on it is what i'm saying i think she signed off on it but didn't quite understand the ins and outs and didn't understand how unhinged janet is well and also we had mentioned that lauren hasn't commented on any of this and like if you weren't actually involved with the lawyer why the fuck would you not say something and be like i don't know what's going on guys this is fucking weird and it's very important to note that lauren the mortician is someone who comments on hate frequently she always is addressing the haters clearing things up this that and the other talks about the whole like her being a turf thing. She has addressed literally every point that people have for the most part. And this, she doesn't? It's like, girl, just get on and say that's not your lawyer. When you think about the fact that what the lawyer is claiming people are doing is like stealing her content and using it for commercial purposes, whatever. She wouldn't want to stitch or do anything with other people's content because then she mm -hmm. would be doing the same yeah. thing. On that note, um, Apparently, did you know, according to Janet, defamation's actually like not hard to prove in court. Oh, at all. really? Good to know. I, I that's actually very useful information for me. Thank you, Janet. Is that Janet? Yeah, this is Janet. Everyone say hi, Janet. Does she have an AI filter? It, it does kind of look a little weird. It is completely super strange filter all over her face. Okay, anyway. Here, this is gonna be her demystifying defamation in false light. Let's talk defamation and what constitutes opinion, what constitutes false statement of fact. I've seen a few non-attorney business owners say that defamation is really hard to prove in court. I don't know where you're getting this information from because it really depends. Uh, Precedence? From pretty much, uh, yeah, yeah every, everyone <laughs> that's ever tried to do a defamation case, but okay, sure. And some defamation is super easy to prove in court, so let's get into it. You want to post a review of a business. You do have a First Amendment right to do that as long as what you're saying is true and honest. You can say, I don't like the business owner. You can post that, that's fine, that's opinion. Nothing is actionable about it that is protected by your First Amendment right. You can say, I don't like their products. That's opinion, no problem, post that. You can say, I don't like the business owner as a person. Again, opinion, that is fine. Where you start to get into trouble is where you quantify that. And if you say, I don't like the business's customer service, opinion, fine, stop there. If you say, I emailed them five times and never received a response, but they did respond, now you're treading on defamation and false. So I'm gonna just uh, hypothetically, if someone was like, Lauren the Mortician is a turf, isn't that an opinion based on her liking a bunch of stuff that a turf would like? Is that an opinion still? I feel like it, that's an opinion. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's absolutely an opinion, but she's forgetting the most important part of defamation, which is proving damages. That's like the hardest thing to do. It's not just about like, did you know the truth when you said that statement or not? It's how much damage did that do? That has to be measurable. And it's almost never measurable for anyone. Well, especially when it's like loss of income or something. Yeah, like how could she prove that Kitty is responsible for that and not us for who made a YouTube video or anyone else who comments on Lauren the Mortician? Also, I feel like if anything, it would be an increase of income because 
because she's getting more attention from all 100 percent. yeah it's just literally that is what makes defamation so hard to prove because number one you have to prove that the person knew that they were lying when they said something they maliciously said something to defame you and then that resulted in x amount of damages and it can't just be like, it hurt my feelings. Like, nobody cares. Well, and again, calling someone a turf, like, that's not really a provable thing. <laughs> like, I feel like that's an opinion. It absolutely is. Slight, which I think a lot of people forget about. It is super easy to prove in court that that was a false statement of fact, especially if the business owner that you made that against has proof in email form that, look, they did respond and you say they didn't. And if you say you emailed five times, but you actually only emailed twice, second statement of false fact. Hopefully this demystifies a little bit. Oh my God. No, Janet, bit, it doesn't. Janet. It does not. She literally just negated everything I just said and like, just acts like, well, you sent two emails. You said he sent five. Okay. How did that hurt the business, Janet? Her leaving a bad Yelp review. Like, did you guys lose a hundred thousand dollars that year because of that? Like, I'm so confused. I'm sorry. Is someone going to court over saying that they sent five emails and not two? Like, why is that the example? I just want to see a list of Janet's clients. Cause you know, it's the most petty business owners you've ever met in your fucking life. But like, honestly, when you think of a bad review, right? Yeah, it sucks for business. No business likes to have a bad review. How many people would you even know didn't go to your business because of that review? You cannot measure that. So you cannot prove it's it. It's very clear cut according to Janet. Well, it's all demystified now. So it actually all just makes sense. I don't know how, but it does. Honestly, I can't believe this is real. But um, if we scroll down, there is a comment that says, can we get one on if it's cool for an attorney to harass the other party by requesting wellness checks? But Janet decided, you know what, I'm gonna respond and demystify that as well. Individuals often perceive inquiries into their well-being, such as wellness checks, as intrusive or harassing when they are in need of assistance. <laughs> Oh, so she basically just confirmed it. She just it. admitted that she did it. She's oh fucking my fucking crazy. God. Fucking send a wellness check on us, Janet. Please actually don't. Wait, that's fucking crazy. So when we first saw Kitty's thing, we were like, that just doesn't seem like something that could happen. Like, not that we, again, thought Kitty was a liar, but it just seems so bizarre that an attorney would send police to someone's house for a wellness check because they literally just don't like her personality and like don't like the things she says about Lauren. We didn't think she made it up. We thought someone else was fucking with her. Was like trolling but her. But no, I yeah. like, no, it was just Janet. Just Janet in the shadows doing weird shit as she does. No, my thing is too that Jamie, the car seat technician that we talked about in our Lauren the Mortician episode, he seemingly has been untouched by all this like he has not been contacted by janet which i would think would be like a main target because that's like the main beef online is lauren the mortician and jamie and i'm just so confused on the people they chose that innocent person who just sent an email and did nothing publicly was like arguably more harassed than kitty was funny you mentioned that because there's another comment that says is it defamation to write a private email to someone and then someone said girl don't play dumb you know this lady threatened a measly nobody with two days of jail time for sending an email to a public email in in someone's bio, I guess. And Braun Law responds, no, I didn't. Where are you getting your facts from? Okay, wait, my two theories are merging. They're giving birth to each other. I can see clearly now, okay? No twists are in the mud. The I know exactly what's happening. I think this is both theories I have coming to life. I think Janet is absolutely behind the kitty thing. I do not think she's behind that other email thing. I feel like somebody here is getting trolled and I can't tell exactly how it's happening if it's Laura and the Mortician getting trolled by this lawyer who's pretending to represent her. I have no fucking idea. What I do know and what I think is a little bit weird and I said this last time we filmed too and this is the part that confuses me about this is that the person who has no platform privately emailed the public email that Laura and the Mortician has available. So whoever is responsible for Laura and the Mortician's emails is the one who responds that's the only thing that I'm like, oh, that does sound like Janet did it. But like, oh, I don't know anymore. Never mind. Me giving up on my theory halfway through. I'm just even, like, actually, makes that makes no sense. The person says, you know what video and who I'm talking about. Stop playing this game of having me tell you. Are you going to send a cease and desist to them? And then she says, you are accusing me of something. Burden is on you to prove your accusations as true. Where are you getting your facts from? This feels like she's trying to get this other TikToker to like say something that then she can then get them in trouble for. Send a cease and desist Literally, for? it's like, oh my God. 
stop the fucking cease and desist. Wait, so my thing is she just admitted just a second ago that she's responsible for the wellness check to Kitty. So her denying this to me is pretty telling. I don't think Janet's a very honest or great person, but why wouldn't she admit to that too? They said defamation to write a private email and wasn't the one that she sent to the person like harassment and like blackmail and stuff. Yeah, but that's what they're referencing. Yeah, but I think she's playing a semantics game and she's like, I didn't say it was defamation. Oh, that could be true too. You know, Janet is quite the conundrum. She's pretty clever. You're being put on notice of complaints to the Bar Association in your state by many of us. Have fun. You seem to really struggle with language and definitions for someone who's studied law. Slay. The comment like ratio never lies. How dare you call in a false wellness check on someone or on anyone? And then she goes, no false wellness checks were called in. You don't know all that you think you know. Regardless of your seemingly inability to grasp what defamation is, you know what you did is spawning, right? And by the way that she talks to Kitty, it's very clear that you probably told the police that she was going to hurt herself. And that is actually swatting. And I feel like that uh, email she wrote was like trying to like pad that as evidence or something, but it's like, no, no, it's still just you saying that though. Her go-to response is, you don't know all that you think you know. Well, considering your cease and desist was filled with hot diarrhea and half of it was you just referencing that someone went live and said something, I think we probably do know Janet. She literally responded to another one. No one called in a wellness check on anyone that didn't need it. Where are you getting your facts from? Ma'am, what the fuck? You don't know this person. What do you mean? Like, why are you acting like you're her psychiatrist? Yeah, literally the second that we all deem it okay to call a wellness check on anyone you think is crazy online is the day everything goes to hell because you have no idea how many people I see on the daily on my For You page that are fucking crazy. And it's just like, all right, well, live your life, queen. I mean, it, you can't do that. I'm literally, like, this is mind blowing. Who? is this woman? I don't know, but what I do know is that Lauren the Mortician, you need to address this if this is not your lawyer, but I have a sneaking suspicion she is your quote unquote lawyer or you guys are in cahoots in some way. I feel like she needs to address this if it is her lawyer or if it's not. Either way, what the fuck is going on, Lauren? You cannot allow speculation around this because this person being associated with you is like the end of you. Like there is no redeeming quality to having someone work for you that that is harassing innocent people just for speaking or asking questions like this is fucking it's not crazy. too late to get out no it's not and if you spend longer to address this then people are going to draw more and more conclusions themselves because you're not talking about it and so for instance even though i have some suspicions that maybe the cease and desist that was sent to the person who just emailed and is not a public figure i don't know about that i don't know the legitimacy of that but the more you don't answer the more that seems real and the more everything seems very very closely tied to you so like hello get on tiktok Talk about it. Well, and I wonder if maybe the cease and desist that was in response to the email, maybe the email mentions something about Kitty. And it's not just like, are the allegations about you being a turf true? Interesting. So she could have been inquiring about the actual like cease and desist and Kitty being involved in all that shit. Oh yeah. Kitty could be the like kind of tension point for Janet. I feel like Janet has like a vendetta against Kitty and like anyone or anything that mentions her, she's like triggered. So it could be. <sighs> Which I think is hilarious because Kitty very much seems like someone uh, maybe you don't fuck with because she's literally like, oh, I already have half of my lawyers retained uh, made from a GoFundMe. Honestly, maybe we should donate. Yeah, maybe we should. Send Janet our best regards. Honestly, though, thank God that you found all of this because, wow, our take last time was so wrong. Yeah. And it's easy to look at this because Janet is so wild and unhinged. It's easy to look at it all and be like, that cannot be real. Again, not saying the people saying it are lies, but like, you're being trolled, girlies. This is not a real lawyer. Oh, yeah, I guess it is, actually. So all in all, are we still confused? Of course, but I do think that that definitely clears up things and we kind of know, I mean, not entirely what the involvement between Lauren and Janet is per se, but we know there is some involvement there at least and we definitely know that Janet's full throttle in on this and there is a real lawyer and these are real things that are being sent and cops were sent to a creator's house on Lauren the Martitian's behalf. Like, this is fucking crazy. Well, you know, we'll link Kitty's GoFundMe below if you guys have it in your heart to help her fight Lauren the Mortician's crazy lawyer. And honestly, I'm gonna be, I wanna keep an eye out for this one. I wanna know Janet's next move. I can't even lie. She is very, very intriguing to me in the worst way possible. But that was the longest update ever. Uh, we're just gonna jump to our outro because literally we had to recover all of it, so. Yeah, yeah. hopefully this episode makes it up today because it's currently Friday at, or Monday, sorry. It's currently Monday at um 11.21 my time, so. Yeah, 
We'll definitely do our best. So if you're seeing this late, you know why. Okay, back to past us. Bye. But anyway, that is all that we have for you today. What an interesting episode, wasn't it? A bit of a different vibe from our last episode where we slayed super hard on Christy Girls and Romano. Unfortunate, but you yeah, know. I feel like we're coming up, we're coming up short this time. Listen, you know, you win some, you lose some. But anyway, that is where we will leave you if you made it to the end. We appreciate you, honestly. If you really made it to the end, this one, you you deserve something. This was weird as fuck. I, my brain hurts. I know, same. But anyway, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a great weekend and have a wonderful rest of your week. And as always, we will see you on Friday. We should also probably go check our emails for season desist. We should. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>